Sometimes we believe what we see and we recreate what we see, ignoring everything around us. But do we travel to be more shallow or to find more depth in ourselves? We believe our actions don't hurt, but we forget that the footsteps that we leave behind impact our own future. You can get the most beautiful pictures in Bali and witness the most beautiful locations, but it all comes with an unmanageable crowd. Not only you might not find space to walk in certain places, you might have to wait hours to explore a destination or even get a photo clip which is Instagram worthy if that's your concern. It is overcrowded and not in a nice way something that Bali has been facing for a while now. You can rent a car or take a scooter, but the traffic problem isn't going anywhere. You will take hours to complete a short drive and you might not be able to get to your destination on time. You cannot find pristine beaches unless you are ready to hike down stairs or down the mountain which in itself explains why they are clean and others are not. Please don't trash beaches and call out others who do. Hi guys, I am Shavi and I went to Bali last year. And there are a few things that I really want to share from my trip. It's one of the most beautiful islands. It's, it's really amazing and it's really, really pretty. But it's going to get on your nerves and you're going to get frustrated with a few things. If you have booked tickets to Bali or you're planning to go to Bali this year and you are mesmerized by everything that you see on the internet and on those Instagram travel influencers channels, this is something that you need to take care of. The first thing is queues and crowds. Let's be honest, we all want to travel. We all want to take pretty pictures and keep them as memories. Why not? Bali is such a beautiful destination that you won't want to click pictures everywhere. But if you are going there with the expectation that you're going to come up with really amazing pictures for social media, then you are bound to get frustrated. The first place that we went was the Uluwatu temple, which I was really looking forward to, the fire dance and their culture. But the crowd, but it was so overcrowded that I started feeling claustrophobic. And I am an Indian. I India has so many people and I'm so used to the crowd. But it really gave me chills. There were too many people there for what that entire space could handle. If you have gone to Bali and you did not do the Bali swing, then you haven't gone to Bali. This is the general sentiment of everyone on the internet. But if you go there, you need to remember that you can either take your shots or your videos or you can actually enjoy the rice terrace and that swing. Because you pay for swinging on that thing once. That is, they will give you three or four pushes at max and that's the thing that you're going to enjoy or you can utilize it to take the most beautiful pictures and the most beautiful videos. Now, the third thing was we went to this really, really beautiful, uh, you know, Jumanji type um, 
waterfall called the Chepung waterfall. It was so pretty, so pretty. But everywhere there was a queue. You had to stand there for like one hour or two hours to actually get the shots that you would want to take. But more upsetting was you not being able to explore the destination. So what happened was we were standing there. We wanted to actually go inside the waterfall and see and experience. But then the guides and the tourists were like, there is a line. You have to stand here. You will not go further. You know, you will, you will be given your time. So they uh, were saying that you know, your chance will come. And then when our chance came, they, everybody was give, given hardly like five minutes. Everything including from going, going till there, admiring the beauty, taking it all in, experiencing it, and then clicking um, any pictures or videos that you want. Everything needs to be done in three to four minutes. And then um, everybody will be like, your time is up and you need to get out. This happens way more frequently than you can imagine in Bali. This happened in Handara Gate also, where we wanted to get that beautiful Instagrammy picture, you know, which looks like there is a gate and then there is water below. First of all, there is no water. It is using a glass on your mobile. So that's fake. And the second thing is there was such a long line. We actually waited for two hours. I'm not sure why I did that. This was so stupid of me to do that. And um, they're like, jaldi karo, jaldi karo, jaldi karo. Hardly two minutes. It was definitely not worth it. Handara Gate is one of the most popular destinations that you can actually skip. There is absolutely nothing in the destination. The next up is traffic. Now, um, I have covered everything in this video and we had actually had a a uh, travel agency for this so they had booked a car but going from one destination to another is such a mess in bali even if it is like 10 kilometers it's going to take you hours uh, there was a lot there was a time when we missed out our destinations because we couldn't make it in time it was not that far away but it's not traffic tight not traffic the hard time hard jaga subha ho ya shamu there is a lot of traffic in bali the third thing is the pristine beaches. I know that a lot of you see those beautiful destination and beautiful beaches in Bali. You have eat, pray, love. There is such a beautiful beach. Hai. But you need to remember that Bali, mein, not every beach is pristine. Not every beach is turquoise. Any beach that is easily accessible, where you don't have to go there, so you can just walk up to the beach. That beach is dirty and trashy. There is a lot of trash. Bali is struggling with that problem. It's also investing a lot of money into keeping it clean. But if it's accessible for tourists, it's a beach for tourists. Uh, it is full of trash. But if you can um, take out a few moments, you can explore new beaches or you can actually climb down the stairs or hike down the mountain. That's when you will find the most pristine beaches for the obvious reasons that you can't go there. So if you are going to Bali, please make sure that you are not the one who is contributing to their trash problems. Um, next up is uh, that last month Bali imposed a tourist tax. You don't have to worry if you are going on a vacation. It's not going to add to your budget a whole lot. Uh, it's around $10 or one uh, one lakh fifty thousand IDR, which is not more than like 800 rupees in INR. So zada kuch farak nahi padega, but Make sure that you pay it and you also remember that this is for the betterment of the land that you're going to. You, it's for the betterment of their culture, their history and preserving the most pristine island I have been to ever. So um, be a responsible tourist. Don't be a part of the problem. Be a part of the solution and make sure that you, know, you are also invested into protecting that country. Lastly, um, Bali is not the only island that Indonesia has. So if you are looking for pristine beaches, some, um, you know, offbeat tourist destinations uh, where you will not found a lot of crowd or such problems like trash or traffic or, uh, you know, queues and crowds, then you should definitely look at, you should explore other islands like Sulawesi, Komodo Island, which has pink beaches and it's supposed to be a really pretty thing. You can also um, explore... Uh, Lombok Island. There are a lot of places in Indonesia that you can go to. So check that out as well. Bali is beautiful, but set your expectations right.